Welcome back, everybody. Thank you for waiting. We're here at the Tasis TV uh, Stormgate Showdown, and um, what an insane upset we just saw. Yeah. Probe is in the Grand Finals. It's an incredible story for him, honestly. It's really cool because he's been such an advocate for the game and everything ever since the early days and the fact that he is actually going this far in this, uh, uh, which is essentially the first, you know, like land tournament basically of the of it is pretty sick. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and I mean, Parting's not out, by the way. Yeah. He's not been eliminated. Um, but coming up next, we're going to have an Infernal versus Infernal match. I think the first one we've had here for this tournament. Yep. Absolutely. And uh, I'm not too up to date on the current meta, so I'm really curious how this is going to look. Mm -hmm. In the past, it's been like a lot of fiends and a lot of memes. Yeah. <laughs> um, fiends and memes. Fiends and memes. Fiends and memes. Nice. <laughs> so uh, I don't know. I think both these guys are playing hot this weekend. Like, they're playing really good. So I think this is going to be a sick set. Uh, we could even see some Celestial. Depending on the map and the player, like yeah. they, they they might gentlemen to infernals. They might. Have. I think I, I think <laughs> we heard actually that they did give the little gentleman's agreement saying that yes, oh. we will be playing infernals, not celestials. <laughs> All right, nice. So we got yeah, an actual yeah. mirror. Yes, it's gonna be pretty good. Yeah, um, you know I, I do feel like um, the laser maybe was a little bit is as godlike as he is at StarCraft two, maybe a little bit overshadowed in the uh, Stormgate narrative. Compared to some of the other guys who are either making a ton of content or are winning everything like partying. But I think a laser, you know, as we're starting to eliminate players more and more, you got to admit this guy is very tournament viable. He, he knows how to kind of concoct a plan and, and, and figure out a, a build and change and alter his strategies in ways where he can come ahead. Well, yesterday we thought that Infernals couldn't deal with the celestial rushes and pushes, right? Yeah. And he went home, or to the land cafe in this case. And was like, oh, actually, I figured this out, you guys. I can just do this. And now he's, like, beating every Celestial. So this guy is super smart. He's obviously figured out a lot. I don't know how much he's figured out in the mirror. That's a whole other issue. But, uh, I mean, he's probably played a ton of it in past builds as well. So that will carry over. As is theory, though. Um, so I think both these guys are going to show us some good stuff. And hopefully a few different strategies. Yeah, I think also the we were wondering as well if it, the mirror would look the same with the mass fiend stuff. Obviously, now it's been changed so that way the the gaunts don't start with infest, right? So that you can't just chain the creeps all the time with the uh, the mass fiends going everywhere. So that at least won't be coming into play super early, I'd imagine. So I think we'll see at least some more diversity in terms of how these early games look compared to what may they might have looked like a while ago when it was just all those big fiend wars and everything. All right, all right. we are off to the races here, guys. Theory in the top right and a laser in the bottom left. Um, I, I don't know this matchup specifically that well. I, I thought we'd see a little bit more of it, but we're kind of digging into it only just now. Yeah. Uh, how much can you actually rush an Infernal versus Infernal? Do we well, know? It looks like it I might mean, be a little bit because the laser's going for a bolt right in the middle of the map here. Yeah, I was messing with an wow. all-in, like um, uh, Conclave, Iron Vault, all-in. Um, <clears throat> but, you know, it, that was pre-Hexen being in the game. Yeah. And He's by the way, this is about to get scouted. Oh. Very nice wait, scout wait, here is it, is it Yeah, yeah he must yeah, see yeah. that, right? Yeah, he sees yeah. it. So he's going to know there's some potential for aggression here in the uh, for laser in the middle of the map here. We have a, an imp wandering down here to make a base. I'm guessing, yeah, he's going to take this base down here. Is he going to make it there? No. What? He's going to make it in between the... Oh. No, he is going to go. Oh, that's... Okay. I guess that gives you the most optimal Ethereum later. You, you yeah, yeah, yeah. don't need a shrine. Slightly negatively yeah. affecting the Luminite mining. That's a f this is like a new wrinkle just formed in my brain. <laughs> <laughs> like when I saw that. Because I, I was about to do my cash thing. I was like, yeah, it's this place. <laughs> like, yeah, I'm like, oh, actually, that kind of makes perfect sense. Yeah. Now the Hexen Wars are going to go off in the, the main bases here. Getting a Fiend each is, is nice. So uh, the... the Early Gaunt Infest isn't quite a thing, but the early Fiend uh, with the, the, the skeletons there at least is giving you something, so that's good uh, to, to get. Obviously, you want to always try to get that as an Infernal. Um, but, I mean, a laser going for this early push here. We're going to see if Theory is able to defend it while going uh, for that Shrine first and then going into the, the Vault and the, the Conclave defensively. This is going to be a lot of Brutes coming in pretty quickly here. Yeah, already two Brutes at the natural... Oh! Does he think he hasn't expanded because there's no base there? Oh, no He actually took it to no the third way. where the Ethereum is, but a laser sees there's no base. He thinks, oh, you must be all in no in me or something crazy. Way. I'm going to turn around. But actually, if he knew there was a base of that third, he would surely push, right? There's only a Hexen out right, right. now. Right. 
Like, if he pushes the main, how do you defend? And look at that. Now Theory is also canceling his Shroud Stone. He's like, oh, he's not attacking me. Okay, that's, that's crazy. Weird. So oh. sick game, sick kind of mind game by Theory, taking yeah. that second base at the third base location. Yeah, you know, it's, it's funny. I feel like, you know, some factions have, I guess, just more access to scouting than others. Right. Uh, and I feel like Infernal definitely don't have a problem with scouting. And, and But, yeah, this is a game where, yeah, kind of a misread on the situation is... is shooting it into a totally different trajectory. Wow. Look at it. He goes to the second check and be like, oh, and he's going to be like, oh, my God, what the heck is he doing now? But Jeez. he has to assume now, okay, wait a minute. He, I mean, I guess. It's still quite early, right? It could be like some crazy one base thing, but he is going to take this camp here, the, uh, the health camp, and then after that, you've got to imagine he sends a fiend both to the third and the main to check what he's doing because he needs information here. He does get that camp, going to heal up a little bit. That does give you that global health regeneration bonus as well, not only on units in there. And now the skull, it just misses the army, but it will see that he's taken the camp, so he'll know a laser was here. Um, but a laser's supply is huge. He actually has a huge army. Uh, he's not expanded, right? He's still just making oh, units yeah, of right. one base. So this push is still going to hit very hard here, and... We see three, two boots and a hexen at the top. A third there's, one comes out now. There's this no is dark shrine, right? Or no dark shrine. Uh, I'm sorry, what, what is it called? What is the uh, turret called? Shroud Stone. Shroud Stone. Sorry. <laughs> it does kind of look like a dark shrine. I kind of. Right, guys, saying. I promise by the end of the tournament, I'm gonna know all the building names. Okay. <laughs> Using the the skull there to target the hexen is kind of a good play. So that's got a lot of utility. Obviously, if you can pick that off, that'd be pretty good. So weakening it in any way is nice here. Uh, the fact that a laser took so long to actually attack in here is kind of interesting because it did kind of, like you said, there's no Shroud Stone. It kind of baited uh, Theory into thinking that there wasn't actually an attack coming. But there still is here. But, I mean, it seems like a laser doesn't actually feel confident going into that. There's a ton of Gaunts that are out, and it's kind of difficult to get into that little choked-up area to the back of the base where Theory was just kind of sitting there. So, uh, yeah, he's just... A laser's just still sitting here on one base. He's not expanded yet. Oh, he's going to see it now. Finally sending these fiends over. Probably going to shake his head when he does see this, as he knows he, he will know he could have pushed earlier. These fiends are going to run in, take out this shroud stone instantly. The imps have to evacuate. Uh, luckily, he is going to be able to save them. If he can keep the base, I think this will be good for theory. Yeah. And a laser's well, going to move down the ramp he here. He might get sandwiched here. How, who actually has more here? I think a laser might have a little bit more, but there's more gaunts in the mix uh, yeah. here with this. Oh, dude, a laser's in a sick position right now if he could cut off some units, but he's he's going to back up. And he's I feel like he's kind of he's, missed his window he's here. He's so like, non-committal with this. This is crazy, but he's yeah. not expanding. So but he's obviously he obviously wants to attack still. He knows Theory's on two bases now, so he knows he has to do something, right, if he's not going to expand yeah. himself. Um, but still posturing around here, using this health camp. Going to look for the perfect engagement, I guess. Dude, I feel like we, feel like we should throw the fiends somewhere and like go from both sides on this high ground here or something like that. He's just going to try to go into the army, though, actually. He's just going to get the, uh, the, the fest in the middle there. He's able to get on top of these gaunts, and then the uh, fiends on the right side will be able to go in for the surround here. And Theory, maybe stepping a little bit too far out, is getting oh. completely killed at his second base. Yeah, the Gaunts are going to intercept the other Gaunts just south of the screen over here, so he can't quite reinforce. So Elazer's going to pounce in this position at the expansion while actually denying anything from coming in, in here to help out. This actually just could be game. Yeah, I mean, that was the entire army from Theory right there. All the Gaunts dying. The natural base is also going to kill, get killed off, and that's the GG. A laser wow. with the never-ending one base proxy vault all in eventually makes it work. I'm shocked. I thought he would have to hit that like way earlier for it to work because the expansion was up for quite a while, right? You would think, oh, it's going to pay off and you're going to get more units. But he just had a bigger army for a very long time there. And eventually he catches him out of position at the natural, at uh, the third base, you know, where he took his second. And uh, he's just able to jump on everything and take it out. It's sort of the thing, right? Because like I was saying, like a laser is taking so long to actually attack that it then fakes theory into thinking that he's expanded because he can't get a scout out to right. check yeah. if anything's coming across. It's it's a long map. The the skull doesn't actually get that far from the hexen to get all the way across, I believe. So he can't actually double check if there's an expansion. But if the, if a laser never attacks, then he's like, oh, well, I, I can't over defend because then I'm going to be behind if he expands. Yeah. But You're so going to go back into focusing on workers and, and yeah, tech yeah. and then it's like, okay, well now 
It's it's a smart move. It, it, it's kind of misleading when you're watching it. You're like, does he does he not know he can attack, or can he yeah, not get yeah, in yeah, there? Yeah. But he played it really nicely, and I love the fact that he was able to shut down the reinforcements that would have come in there. It seems like once um, Theory was trying to run in and defend his base, because of the weird position of that expansion, you end up getting stuck there. Yeah. And if you don't have enough, if you don't have total control of that area, you can't get back out. Yeah, it was a nice mind game at first to uh, maybe initially trick a laser into uh, not not committing, but then. Once it did, once he did start to commit, then yeah, it was really difficult to actually go down and defend that. Uh, I think we're gonna be going into the game in a second here. See, God, I'm good. Yeah. All right, so we're gonna go into game two. <laughs> uh, theory versus a laser. A laser is up one to zero, and um, yeah, let's see what happens this time around. It was kind of a basic game as far as how it wrapped up. It was one base destroying a guy who's expanding. So in that game, the aggression crushes the greed. Um, but let's see what happens here in game two. Right, we are on Boneyard, which is a big map, so if you have a kind of macro or greedy build that you oh. want to use, this would be the time, but again, we are seeing that... It's a very obscure spot to put the Conclave. Yeah. yeah. Is that to... Why would you make that there? Surely it's to it, avoid the, the normal scout path, right? Yeah, he wants to hide okay. this, so he's going to double yeah, Conclave yeah. here. So he's going to do the Conclave in the main to make it look like it's oh. kind of normal-ish, and then having that second one in a really off spot to make it seem like two it's just to get it out of the way, basically. Because con Conclave expand is not weird. Yeah. Oh, dude, what a nice save there, saving that worker by turning it into a building. Yeah, that, yeah, was, that was sick. If he got a Fiend from that, it could suddenly snowball, so really nice save there. On the other side of the map, we do see a laser poking in as well. He's going to see what Theory is doing. Uh, try to get his own fiend here. Oh, he actually gets one. That, you got to be careful. You don't want to lose another worker here or you start to actually get behind. Don't forget, behind this, there is the double corn kind of all in, I guess, coming, right? The proxy. Uh, so Theory is going to have a tough defense ahead of him. These gaunt sneaking around the map now to join up with the other ones that come out of this conclave. How many do you think he's going to wait for before he goes there? Just right away, or? I don't know. I mean, there's definitely a right number, right? I guess he's got to get up to four before he starts to move here. Yeah, they are quite slow, right? So you can't wait too long. You will have to start getting across yeah. the map at some it, point. The closer that building is, I guess, the longer you can wait, right? But yeah, they're, they're actually, I think, some of the slowest units in the game, realistically, even though you can oh. kite with them. So he's going to camp? Interesting. That is strange. Yeah, Theory does oh. have the Vault Conclave, so it's not like he won't have units. He hasn't, you know, expanded like on Shrine first or something crazy. But yeah, abusing this Wait. camp, which is melee only, is pretty smart here. I'm having flashbacks to when I would try to do yeah, this in the yeah, first yeah, version yeah, of the yeah, game yeah. on stream, and then I'd lose all my gods. So like, well, <laughs> the stream ends early today, Chad. <laughs> um, is he actually, like, he's not expanded yet still, right? Oh, he did lose a gaunt there. This Wait, a la a laser still hasn't expanded. So, I mean, it shouldn't be the most shameful thing to lose a unit to a creep, but it is very tilty. Yeah. Oh, look at it now. Oh, no. That's the spot. Oh, there, that's the sweet spot right now. <laughs> You've driven me mad. <laughs> Stop hurting me. <laughs> yeah, and we do see the expansion from Theory. So it's similar to game one in the sense that we're going to have Theory going for the economic approach. And uh, a laser taking this Luminite Tower is going to yeah. have you know, more resources and going to try to shove here at some point. That's really interesting, yeah, because it, it is a Luminite uh, Tower, so that means you're essentially boosting your one base all in with extra resources that you nor normally wouldn't have. So I I don't know how much that actually gives you, the tower, like if it's actually enough to like, it's not, It's there's no way it's the same as like a Luminite mine at all, right? I Definitely tested it that. once and like, if you, this is on the last patch, but if you instantly crept it with a Lancer, you got like 320 Luminite or something over a few minutes. Mm, okay. I don't remember the exact number, but it's like pretty decent income after a while, right? I mean, it's nice to be able to bolster a one base all in like this. That's like, you know, the whole, the whole point of a one base all in is that you're cutting economy to be able to do an aggressive attack, but then if you have this extra bit of it coming in as well, it's pretty sick here. So. We're just going to have eventually just like a bunch of gaunts coming out here, but it doesn't seem like a laser is actually committing to anything. He's just using this to take a bunch of creeps and it's going to expand later anyways. Interesting. What? So I guess the point of the double conclave is just to get that Luminite boost like as soon as possible. Maybe. Or maybe you're looking for something that they can do where you can pull the trigger, right? Mm. Maybe it's like some kind of like 
I, I can make this a macro game, but if I see certain, something happening, it, it just hard counters that. Maybe maybe it's a build like that. I don't know. Right. You do get to get the other gaunt, uh, the other Luminite camp as well, though, with these gaunts, which is super nice. Once you get the double Luminite camp, you have like get really rich, right? Yeah. You can take another. You can take another base. You can add on more production, and start to get ahead uh, a lot. Even though you made the two production buildings before your natural. I mean, I guess this like since you can get all these towers, right? He cleared four towers. That's a lot of money that you're getting from actually killing the towers too. Right. The creeps at the towers, I should say. So, does all of this together with the two luminite mines as well? Does that make it or the two luminite towers? Does that make it so that way this like uh, it makes up for the fact that you're expanding so late? Does that just make you even or ahead even? I think it looks good to be honest because he's getting his own base as well. Like granted, it's later. But those two mines, the two Ethereum creep camps, as they tick over and give you more and more money, I mean, you're going to be looking good, I think. We'll have to see here. His army is very scary. A lot of gaunts. He doesn't want to push in on this base, though. There are yeah. the Fell Hogs. He can spawn a, you know, a Shroud Stone with a top bar ability and stuff as he gets tiered up here. Um, just sharking around, looking to see if there's anything he can do. Theory's supply is kept up, though. He's not, like, behind in any way, as far as I can tell. And he also has that, that's the energy camp down there. So uh, maybe I'll try to get an engage down here. Now remember that Gaunts are not fast, so uh, he's going to recapture this spot down here. Obviously, uh, that'll give away his position. That's kind of interesting. Like, Wait, why does he want to go for that? I guess only the Hexen has energy, right? Yeah. Okay. Really the only one you now, have. can't he just split these brutes into fiends and get in front of this and corner it? I think you're right. And there's a Magmadon yeah. out as well. If that Magmadon gets on top of these guns, it might not even matter. There's just so much here for theory. This fight is going excellent. Catching those two guns so they come down the ramp as well. Oh, he gets really the last nice one, trade. spawns into their fiend. It, it's crazy, the, the kind of chain reaction. Like, it, it looks like, you know, whoever could win, it's not clear. It's kind of ambiguous. And then, bam, they just all the fiends pop out. Yeah, now... He's just able to, to completely chase this down. I mean, I feel like the going for these early gaunts hasn't really given uh, a mu as much of a benefit that a laser maybe hoped for. It's, he couldn't really ever attack with them is the, is the interesting thing. Because obviously yeah. if you're making all these units to take the creeps, that's cool. But it's like Theory can just go ahead and make his own units as well. And he techs up to even better units with a Magmadon coming out. Like you can't do anything against the Magmadon this early with such a low ga gaunt count. Yeah, it's interesting. I wonder if he wanted to push with those gaunts initially, but like something made him change his mind, or yeah, it's very interesting. And I mean, it seems like the, just getting the base was actually better than getting the two Luminite camps. Yeah, uh, especially as he's able to fight for them once he gets his own army out. Well, I'm not really surprised by that, but <laughs> yeah, it's good to get the confirmation. <laughs> this angle's pretty good. I think a laser can push this back off. Um, so that's about as far as there he's going to get with that. Uh, w what is the expansion setup like right now? It's still just two base versus two base, right? Uh, no, yeah, nobody. Oh, no, never mind. We just saw a third. And again, that position over there, it's interesting. We kind of all started out with the um, Luminite uh, shrine position always being like, you know, 90 degrees. Yeah. yeah, perpendicular. Yeah. Um, but we're starting to see the shift where it's like always being planted in between the two resource locations. Especially with Infernals, they don't have another production structure like a scrapyard to make, right? Right. So they have to use a shrine for both. You don't want to make two, so... But here we go, big fight happening in theory, jumping on top of these gaunts with the Magnodon, doing huge stomps. He's getting pushed back, though, actually. Uh, suddenly, a laser oh. turning this fight around. Yeah, he was able to use the uh, defensive Shroud Stone there really effectively to help swing this a bit. And since his reinforcements are much closer to the fight, he's able to actually overwhelm this army and even get the Magmadon stuck in the middle here. And he's going to be able to swing this quite heavily, actually. I'm amazed at how much he was able to suddenly spike up in supply compared to his opponent here. This is now looking pretty good for a laser if he can continue this momentum somewhere. But the, fa the fact that the third base is fully uh, going to be fully set up here for theory, Eliezer has a bit of a clock on him right now that he needs yeah. to actually make use of this uh, this advantage. Well, let's see how much further south he's going to go here. He's taking this one uh, tower for now, but it looks like he's going to come in here with a push. And this would kind of be the sweet spot. If he could hit, I guess, actually, the defensive structures are going to be up just in time. But if he can kill this spot off and expand himself, he's going to be in good shape. Yeah, this fight is going to decide the game, probably. If he can keep this third base up, he's going to have a much better economy. 
But Alezo's army is better right now if they were to fight. There's actually a Harbinger there. He's got to be very careful that he cannot rally that into the Gaunts. What's inside that? Is that a Magma? Mag, yeah. Oh my god, if he drops that on top of them. That would be sick. He's on the island like, haha, you guys can hit <laughs> <give> me. <laughs> <laughs> okay, finally Alezo takes a base here as well, expanding towards <coughs> his opponent, uh, which is... I think that makes sense, right? Like, if you're being aggressive, yeah. uh, expanding towards your opponent means you only have to worry about one front, really. Um, he's going to take more creep camps here and just keep macroing up. Both of them added in Magmadons. Do you think we'll see any... I think Magmadon Gorn is kind of like what you want to go for here, right? And then add dragons in as you get the Animus. Yeah, and then, you, I honestly, I mean, back when I would play it, back when, like, you know, a couple phases ago or whatever, getting Hellborns in as well eventually is very good because then you have the sick range advantage as well, and you just can't, if you if you target fire them as well onto the gods in the back line, it, it's so sick, they just melt them. So it's really good splash combo to go in with the Magmadons and then the Hellborns on the back because then you, you can't, like, get onto the Hellborns because the, the, the only range that you have is more... Hellborns <laughs> yourself, <laughs> so yeah. you can't actually get on top of them, which is, yeah, there we go, get a couple of them from Theory coming out right now, so yeah, getting those as well to round out is, is really good here. For sure, the only issue is if the Magmadon player can set up like a sick flank, right, and yeah, get yeah, on yeah, top yeah. of those Hellborns, but uh, that got still down to the position. We see Theory's kind of signature move here, the Harbinger drops coming out, and Magmadon and Gaunt's going to work on all these workers here, get, has to pick up. Ooh. Pretty low. Whoa. Whoa. Oh my god, he dropped it on the low ground. Magmadon combat rolls out of that. <laughs> <laughs> Watch this. Uh, oh my god, here we go. Magmadon's coming up here. Can he get in the way with, of this with the fiends and the brute? Yeah. It looks like he's microing the gaunts pretty well, too. Um, don't want to let that Magmadon get on top of that and do too much damage. Yeah, he did manage to save the harbinger there, so that's something. But uh, yeah, that was not kind of the damage he was looking for, really. Yeah, a bit of a waste, really. It was kind of unlucky that he landed on, like, he landed on a base that had, like, no imps on it, and they were all long-distance mining as well. So he didn't really get very good clump damage there, which was a bit unlucky for him. But, I mean, uh, I don't know. I feel like a laser is still kind of keeping the momentum in his side overall when it comes to some of these engagements and just the overall tempo of this game. It's felt weird, because it felt like he's been behind almost the whole time, but he's still doing totally fine. Yeah. yeah. The issue he has right now is he has no Ethereum. Look at Elazer's resources. Oh, wow. He's got 1.8k and no Ethereum to spend, to, you know, to, to make anything with him. So, I, I mean, he needs to get another Shrine go in, get some more Ethereum income in, and if he can spend all that, he's going to have a huge army here. Getting the Siege Camp, though, is pretty good. This could really force Theory's hand here to get into a fight that maybe he doesn't want to. Oh, Where does this thing workers? push? To the bottom. Oh, he's going to hit the workers? Oh, it goes for the main base. Oh. Uh, the base there. Okay, that's lucky. Yeah, I don't even know that he needs to actually dive in here. I think he should just stay back and let this uh, Siege Weapon do its damage. But he I does have a lot of mags here. I feel like he could just go for a big stomp onto absolutely everything, oh, and that's the way go. he's going to do. Getting on top of those units in the back line here, forcing the Hellborn to go to get away as well. I mean... The army sizes are actually totally equal in, in the in uh, in the supplies on the bottom here, so it's kind of awkward because the units from uh, Theory are not all quite here. Now finally coming in with the reinforcements to bring everything in and force a laser back in Theory. I think with the Hellborns in the back, not able to get on top of those, are uh, he's got to be able to actually win out this fight because the oh. the siege thing is just attacking the the shrine this whole time instead of the units. Yeah, maybe an overextension there. We're going to have Theory now come up from the low ground onto the high ground. Um, you know, it seems like a laser can just barely keep this going. Uh, obviously, the you know, the siege weapon. Sorry, what is this called? The rocket launcher? Yeah, the rocket launcher is going to be able to push uh, and keep doing a lot of damage here. Finally take it out. He used the shroud stone placement to actually kill that off. That was actually really good. That and was actually has smart. a dragon out of nowhere here as well. The Magmadon gets a sick stun on all those gaunts, but there's nothing to follow it up. So the dragon now is the huge thing for Theory as a laser has no answer for this whatsoever. Some imps randomly walking through the middle of the fight. <laughs> not where you guys want to be. You guys need to be running back home here as they are not being rallied to the right place. And I mean, like I said, there's just nothing to deal with a dragon out for a laser right now. This is looking like the beginning of the end. Oh. I think you are probably right. You know, Theory, from all the games that I've seen of him, he really is the master at kind of navigating the game up to where the dragon is and closing it out. He yeah. kind of plays a, 
a, like as you'd say, like proper infernal like end game here. Right, he has 15 on Ethereum there, but no Whoa. shrine nearby, so they're not mining very efficiently. And he, yeah, he's just been out of Ethereum for like the last five minutes, basically. Theory pushing up here with this huge army. There's a lot of shroud stones up there, but the Hellborns will be able to chip away at them. Theory smells blood in the water here. Going to push in, try to. I don't know, take a fight if you can find one, but there's a pretty narrow choke point here you'd have to push through. Oh. Against Magmadons, you don't want to do that. He is able to pick off one Shroudstone on the high ground. Um, and this dragon is kind of the game changer here. If Eliezer can't get his own dragon at some point, it's going to become really rough when all those fiends spawn, you know? Almost sniping <laughs> the, the, the Harbinger there with the two Hellborns in it. It would have been a pretty nice play from a laser, but thankfully Theory is able to land it and get them out safely just in time here. Oh my god, using them on the Imps as well with the oh. burn uh, as well, getting massive damage over there, but then just tries to go onto the, the creep camp over here, and a laser backing off wisely doesn't want to take this engage. Yeah. Yeah. Theory even has his own uh, Shadow Flyers, right? In case Eliza gets his own dragon, he has all these shadow fires oh, yeah. ready to blow up a dragon if Eliza was able to make one. So it seems like he really has this kind of late game like mapped out, perhaps a little bit better than Eliza does at this point. I do feel like yeah, if you're gonna learn how to play the game like kind of in air quotes like correctly, uh, this is like the guy to watch. Right. By the way, Theory streams uh, on Twitch, so you should definitely check yeah. his stream out. But I've learned a lot from just watching what he's doing. Okay, this is such a good angle for the dragon. Oh my oh. god, what an abusable spot over here. I guess that, yeah, the Illuminate is kind of on this little peninsula out here. There's <laughs> not really any way to protect it, so he can't mine from that for a long time. Yeah, this is going to get really awkward now. I mean, it feels like a laser's hand is going to get forced here eventually. He's going to have to just kind of try to dive bomb the army, and he might be trying to do that right now. Getting on with all of the Magmadons stomping their way into the Gauntlet. It's actually sick getting a huge stomp off on all of those Gauntlets, but the Dragon continues to be uncontested over here. The Shadow Flyer's protecting it, but honestly, the ground army's getting kind of thinned out here from a laser. I'm not quite sure if there's actually enough from Theory to kill all this on the ground. Yeah, well, the Magmadons did their work, man, but the Dragon is still in the game, and when you start to chain those Infests together, I guess the question is how many fiends can you get out? So, uh, Theory alive in the sky while a laser dominates the ground. What happened here? That he, was the, weird. the Magmadons were just sick. They got the ma a huge stomp on every single gaunt. They got a second one as well on the same army, and everything on the ground died. The dragon is the only thing left standing here. That's so insane. I thought that like Theory's army looked huge, right? Yeah. And he had the dragon, and he was getting fiend spawning from the uh, the breath ability and all that. It looked like he was in a really good position, but a laser with a sick hold here he suddenly finds himself in the lead. Uh, I mean, he needs something to do with his dragon at some point, though, right? Like shadow yeah, fires. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like gaunts don't really cut it <coughs> that well, right? I feel like at some point you need the shadow fires, but we'll see what he's going to try and do. All these imps moving up here. Oh, they're just long distance. It, it, sorry, a, a laser's at like 300. Animus, right? There's no dragon uh, at all. Well, he needs the money for that. Yeah, 700, well. 700. Okay, expensive. So very expensive. If he could get one out, though, then that advantage the theory does have would be negated, right? Was the dragon always, did it always cost money? Or no, no, no they, okay. yeah, it, it did, it did, but they just increased it a lot. Okay, yeah, it, uh, yeah I feel like, like I remember it not costing as right. much in other games. Okay, that's but it was 300 yeah. Animus before. They reduced yeah. the Animus to 150, but they increased the cost to 700. Yeah, 700. yeah okay, yeah, yeah. that's what it is. So, I mean, the laser's going to just try to clean up as many creep camps as possible. We're going into, like, a super late game Infernal versus Infernal. This is really interesting. Um, fairly different tech routes for this. Where would the next place each side would organically expand? I guess we see the laser taking this spot over here. Yeah, it looks um, like a laser's going to go to the left, and Theory just keeps going to the right. It's, like, mirroring in that way. Yeah, we don't have that many more expansions left. Right. I don't think we've really had a game where every base is taken, but this could be one of them. Although I do feel like, I don't know, maybe because the game's new, it's going to be hard for the players to get on the island. Yeah. You know what I mean with the amount of stuff they're doing? Yeah, you won't be used to doing that for sure, but I like a laser's expansion pattern slightly better here because it's all in a line, right? Like, he can defend most of his bases just by pushing down this one lane. Although now, as those bases are all taken, he is forced to expand horizontally, so that will give Theory, like, some extra avenues to attack down or drop down. <gasps> oh, oh my god, god. that's so oh. many imps. So many imps which become, oh, they blow oh. up. Oh my god, killing so many of those. That was actually a nice reaction by Theory to be able to flame them on and kill off what was initially going to be a massive loss yeah, for him. got one Magmadon with that actually, which is kind of wild. Yeah, and a lot of them are really low health too. 
He is gaming right now in the zone <laughs> is a laser. <laughs> what do we think cool of that keyboard, keyboard, by the way? Yeah, yeah, Can we yeah. get a shot of a laser again for a second? I want to look at that keyboard. Look at this. Yeah. Can you play with one of those? I no, because I use the whole number. Uh, yeah, I use the whole number pad at the top. Don't I you can't, guys? I can't. Right, do you that. only have like six hotkeys. Right? Yeah, unless six. you rebind them to what's next to the yeah. grid. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The yeah, letters. Yeah. But I don't know if you can do that in Stormbreaker. Yeah, but I don't know. Uh, some like keyboard app, you know. Okay. Well, <laughs> eventually they're gonna have the fully customizable hotkeys right. as they have said. So that'll be there eventually. So he's you know playing the long game for everything. Uh, but, I mean, the Laser's army is looking pretty good now. He's got a good supply overall. He does have a dragon himself as well, as it's floating around with a nice group of Shadow Flyers. Just, you know, going around just like a like a whale shark with some random fish uh, following it. This is kind of <laughs> kind of funny. But, uh, yeah, I mean, this is still looking pretty decent for a Laser, I would say. Since he's able to get a lot of these extra bases on the top now, originally he was... Uh, originally his economy was the, the big thing, right? He wasn't... Because he was essentially, like, you know essentially all in from the early stages but now that he's actually able to get economy with a lot of extra bases on the top left side he's looking pretty good to actually stay alive in this longer macro game yeah i think theory is actually saving for another dragon here i haven't seen him spend any Ethereum in quite a while and he does have the animus available so when he hits 700 here there it is right as he hits 700 he instantly makes another dragon so he's gonna have what two now right yep two a lasers one one dragon which is a big advantage uh, so many Magmadons here, though. Oh, oh, okay. Now it's all going to be down to the Dragon and Shadowfire Micro. Avoiding the Magmadon stomps on the ground as a laser moves in here. Theory's this completely out of position. His army's yeah. all the way on the bottom for some reason. This base oh is definitely going to get killed off. And this is going to give him a nice little anchoring spot as well. Oh, oh my God. that was sick. Took that right out. Where's the laser going to go down? There's going to be a meeting in the middle of the map, it looks like. But I think a laser might have a better arc if he can pull the rest oh, of his army back. Going off on all the Magmanons. They're stomping each other. I like how a laser also coming from the side with all his gaunts to make sure they don't get hit by the Magmanons. Keeping a lot of them alive. And everything is staying alive here for a laser as Theory's army is starting to get deplenished. As more Magmanons also coming on the right side to get onto those Hellborns here as well. It's a massive fight here for a laser and nothing seems to be dying. This is insane. A laser is crushing. That might be the end of the game, but there's, there's going to be a hundred supply lead. The dragon staying in the fight right now. There's, there it is. GG. That was a hell of a game. That was oh, so sick. Jeez, I can't believe that. You, you can feel the tension in the room, by the way. That was. <laughs> yeah, you could cut it with a knife. That is very tense. What a beautiful engagement by a laser in that last fight. The way he sent the gaunts, like you said, away from the magmadons was huge. All the Magmadons stomp on each other, and then Elaze is like, oh, actually, my Gaunts are here. You didn't hit any of them with your AoE, and they have that movement speed, so they dash in and do huge damage to Theory's army. I actually also like that Elaze kind of set that up a long time ago because he cleared out that middle area of the trees like maybe like three or four minutes earlier, thinking that there might be a big attack happening in that area to give him the surface area to go for an engage like that and yeah. actually spread out that, that, uh, that much was super good. The fact that also just earlier as well, he looked so dead when that initial dragon push was happening, but then he gets the crazy stomps with the Magmanons there too. I think that just the fights in general from a laser were so well executed. I got to point this out. Uh, a laser up 2-0. Theory's going to get knocked out if he loses. Yeah. One of the next three games. And Theory was the, uh, you know, we, we had two possible players that were likely to get in the finals. One is Parting, who's by the way, in the losers bracket now, probes in the in the, <laughs> in the finals. Not in the finals, <laughs> right? Uh, the other one was theory. Yeah, these were we were considering considering excuse me these guys the two best players uh, in our event, and and now a laser is looking like he just has enough of a handle, he could take this away from theory in the next game possibly. Yeah, a laser lost yesterday his first set, and he's like, <laughs> oh, I'm actually just going to play sick now. Like, I'm actually just going to yeah. play, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. amazing yeah. for the rest of the That's tournament. That's right. He was our first game, right? right. It was really yeah, short. Yeah, yeah. And it yeah. was like, all right, well, like, goodbye, a laser. He's just <laughs> hustling <laughs> everyone right now. He's just like... <laughs> yeah. I know. I mean, this is this is kind of crazy. Um, a laser seems to have a very good handle on how to navigate the matchup. He seems to be really good at adapting. Yeah. It's the interesting thing. The fact that he, like we said, he's just came back after losing so dominantly in the first series of the, the, the tournament, and now he's yeah. looking like... He's looking, like, better than anyone. Honestly. Well, you know, he, he's one of these guys, I guess, out of all the players that we have in this, like, pretty small tournament, uh, we have two players that are basically making a living by dominating in StarCraft II. 
Yeah. Right? They're, they're constantly going to events all over the world competing. They make all their money from, you know, winning and obviously the pro sponsorships. But uh, you can kind of see that survival instinct here with a laser now. He really is able to adapt to the game, the map, his opponent, uh, even with a very limited amount of time. Yeah, his ability to adapt and how quickly he does it is insane. I was so impressed that game. Like I thought he was dead like twice. Yeah. And uh, like uh, the first time was the dragon fight. And then the second time, Theory was just up so much in supply, but he just somehow gets some like miracle engagement with like the best stomps possible and manages to turn it around. I'm so impressed by his position in micro, honestly. And also the strategy, because we saw two different builds, right? We saw the brute push in game one. And then that game, we saw like double Conclave Gorn into taking the Luminite camps into expanding. And it, it, he's just got like a lot of different builds and tricks. And I'm curious to see what he's going to do in this third game here. And let's also remember that like his opponent, Theory, Theory has been all in on Stormgate since day one. Right. Yeah. Like, you know, we all, some of us have, you know, we, we don't do this full time. We've got other jobs or, or, or people are traveling or, you know, they have other obligations. But... You know, I, I had a period of time where I could focus on, uh, you know, two iterations of the beta ago and practice on that. And then I didn't have time to play in the last iteration, right? Uh, and for some of the StarCraft two pros, they've been so busy competing that they're like, okay, well, we're going to wait a little bit later on to, to kind of focus on Stormgate. Theory and Party have been there since the very beginning. Right. Day one, grinding, mapping it out. Um, but it's kind of crazy to see someone like a laser come in here and use that that tournament survival skill set and look so good here. Yeah. Um, that being said, I do think that um, theory can come back here. I it's think that also kind of it's also kind of funny because right now a laser is like in the process of learning how to play Protoss in StarCraft Two as well. So <laughs> like he's like yeah. literally like learning. He's like going from playing Zerg to like playing Protoss at like a super high level, and then is also coming in here and just like learning how to destroy everyone within yeah. two days of in Stormgate as well. I interestingly, uh, a laser. Like, Artosis and I, we play, when we're overseas at events especially, we'll play chess where we have, like, you know, 24 hours to make a move. We don't wait 24 hours to make a move, but it's just, <laughs> but it's just anytime you're free, you can make a chess move. And uh, we, we play with a couple uh, different pro gamers sometimes. Elazer is by far the best chess player. Oh, really? Oh, He's really? so good. He's so good. I think I've beaten him, like, one time out of, like, I don't know. 20 games or something. Oh, wow. Was, Smart guy. Yeah, he's just, he's really good at whatever he's going to focus on. Mm. Um, are we going to be going into this game? I'm not sure there's a delay here. Uh, we okay? All right, just want to see if we need to cut to commercial. Ooh, there's the sound. Music. There it is. There's a smoke. You know what? The smoke can only mean one thing. <laughs> there's going to be a fire game. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I got to say, this matchup is way oh. more interesting oh, now okay. than it used to be. <laughs> Sorry, I, I <laughs> it's such a I'm sorry. I saw the two. I forgot the Hexen was in the game, and I no, thought I there was two imps running. Yeah, Gemini no, literally. You guys can't so say he sorry. literally just jumped yeah. out his yeah. I'm sorry. chair and pointed at the screen. I was so like, excited. Was I thought so we were gonna funny. have like a double proxy <laughs> uh, vault or something like that. I was, oh. No, I've definitely done that where I see a unit leave, and I'm like, it's gonna be crazy. <laughs> and they, they just go and block the hatchery on this side of the map. I'm like, oh yeah, yeah, you could do that too. Um. Okay, we've got a high-speed Hexa chase going on here. <laughs> <laughs> Looks like Theory is actually the one pursuing here. Got a little bit more damage onto a laser's Hexa, and who's actually going to teleport and take even more hits. The double skull comes in. Oh, oh sick. He nice. saves again by making the meat farm. That was so good. That was perfectly timed. That's kind of like the drones making spore crawlers in StarCraft yeah, 2, yeah, right? Yeah. Like against I feel Oracles like it's or something. really Pretty hard here, too, because like you have to get it like I, I'm not. I haven't done it exactly. It seems like it has to be frame perfect. It has to be like when the thing starts to dive instead yeah. of beforehand, because then otherwise I feel like it wouldn't actually start diving down or whatever. And you have to know which one he's going to target as well. Yeah. Which is not easy. Like, yeah, so sick plays there by theory. Uh, we have a brute come out here, kind of mirrored builds from these guys. Hex and Fiend from both. The second brute showing up now for theory, but the Hex is taking a lot of damage here. Oh, and it actually goes down. On the other side, Theory might be able to take out the lasers Hexen as well. Yep, it also goes down. And we, what do we end up with here? A Brute and two Fiends versus a Brute and two Fiends. So... <laughs> it's a funny fight. I was like counting. I was like, oh wait, it's just literally the same stuff. It's two Fiends. I, I ha, think ha, the Theory is winning this one though. He does? Well... I, don't I mean, know. the fact that the reinforcements are going to be really quick here right. with this forward vault from a laser is oh, meaning that he's going to swing it now. 
Uh, he should be able to split that up and get away. But also, oh, you're almost getting surrounded there by those fiends. Would have been really, really bad for him because he could have gotten easily snowballed on there without any Hexen uh, alive anymore to uh, do any more infests for extra fiends. Would have meant to... Would be a little difficult to catch back there, but... I mean, the fact that the, the vaults are also here for theory is going to make it difficult for a laser to fully push, I feel like. So I'm not sure. This is going to come down to a bit of a micro battle, and it feels like nothing else here because the production is very equal. Yeah, they've literally done mirror builds, right? Although we do see... No, no, it's pretty much exactly the same here. So like you said, it's just going to come down to execution, basically. They're going to fight in this lane for dominance. If theory ever pushes a laser back, that building is out on the map. Right, so he'll be able to take out that vault. Uh, so th a laser can't let that happen. So he's oh! kind of forced right. Oh, what a six around against the tree. He's got a Warcraft S there. Able to pick off that brute, make it split into fiends. And oh, nice pick off by a laser here. Sending some fiends around to catch the imp, which is trying to make the natural base the theory. He does get it. That's a good move. That's a very good move. It's also going to force theory to, to come back here because he doesn't actually have any units ready to, to kill that, except for that one slow brute. But the fiends can run away. I guess they're a little bit low health, and now that the the imps do have that uh, little range attack now, instead of just the melee swipes, they are able to deal with them pretty okay. So Theory is going to be able to continue putting pressure on this forward position of a laser. But like you said, since that uh, vault is so far forward, he doesn't want to lose it yet. Still staying on one base here as a laser as well, going into the conclave here too. And now we're going to get a little bit of a fight with the extra brutes coming out of Theory. But one more coming out from a laser. Actually one spawning here as well. Going to get a little surround here on them too. Splitting off into a bunch of different fiends. And will one player come on top? I have no idea. Keep in mind if Blue wins this, this is over the Iron Vault. So you would be able to shut down the production here. He's reinforcing. God, Brutes are so slow. He's going to come up. And yeah, I think actually Theory's going to win this. Which means the laser's going to lose his foothold. Lose the production. Um, this is a big win here for Theory. Yeah, the couple gongs oh, coming out, though, is going to make it very difficult for him to actually push any forward. It's so deceiving when it's the brute fights because yeah, they, they get to such low health. They're like, oh, they're going to die. But then they just split into two different units as well that are at full health. I still don't have a handle on it. It's I keep so trying awkward. to be like, no, I know this. I can do this. <laughs> and it's every time, it, it'll turn on its head. Okay, so it looks like a laser has, what, two volts in the conclave? And Theory has, was it one volt in the conclave? Uh, and yeah. going for the ritual chamber Ooh. for an upgrade. Is right? a laser oh, going second for a ritual there. Yeah, he was making a ritual chamber. So no, is the laser going for one? Too? Oh, a laser. I'm not sure. Oh, he does already have it. Okay, nice. So oh, he's just ahead in general away. in terms of the tech upgrades. So that yeah. should definitely favor the uh, laser here. He's going to have a timing, I'm assuming, before uh, theory does, and should be able to also have enough units because he's he's gone for the the, the gaunts earlier as well. So he's going to have faster or more gaunts and the faster upgrade. So I feel like he should be able to find some sort of short timing if he's really crisp with it to, to get in before uh, Theory is able to really get his full tech transition here. Yeah, the Gaunt transition was a little bit smoother here for a laser. And uh, Theory is kind of a bit scared. It feels like he's just staying home and a laser says, okay, great, I'll take these camps out on the map if you're going to be defensive. And, uh, you know, he gets the Luminite for that. He gets the Vision. So just finding more ways to get ahead and actually going to go ahead and take his natural base here. Can I point this out? That's the first expansion in this game. <laughs> right. We've been yeah, in this yeah, game yeah, for a yeah. long time. They've both been one basing. This is how I remember this matchup. Yeah, no, yeah, same, yeah, same. Yeah, this yeah, I yeah. relate to. This right. was when I was active <laughs> right. in the beta. My so last game, the Hexans like, both died too, so yeah, it's like yeah. really relatable. <laughs> <laughs> God, this is exactly what we did all the time, like six months yeah, ago. Yeah, this is what all of our games look like six months ago, yeah. The Theory's army is like a little bit out of position here. If a laser runs in, it might get cut off. There's a th imp trying to make a base here. Oh, a laser is surely going to pick that off. Oh, that's so good because Theory still is not expanded at this point. Yeah, uh, Theory he has to no come home. Yeah, he has no idea that. Oh, wait, what? He's still, he's still attacking there, the, the, cram the camp. Yeah. A laser does not want to commit into the main. He could yeah. get sandwiched if he does that. So yeah. he's got to be very careful. Keep in mind that besides the fiends everything for infernal is slow moving around so yeah. this um i don't know if he's gonna go down or not but if he could just snipe that iron vault i guess he's not going to the thing is is that 
a laser has already got the expansion lead, there's no reason for him to just try and suicide right. his army for something. He's gonna yeah. he's gonna just always have that advantage regardless with the faster expansion. And he sees how late it is from theory, even that he was trying to go for it in the first place. So he knows that his opponent is is trying to match him in that. But theory doesn't actually have the scout off to know that a laser's already gone for the expansion way earlier. And so he really has to find something here because he's going to start to get overwhelmed really quickly with how uh, a laser's economy is going to develop. Yeah, I feel like a uh, laser showed kind of a lot of experience and good game sense there, picking off the nap but not actually pushing into the main. Yeah. Because yeah. that's one of the ways he could lose if his army's like overextended, right? Yeah, it's kind of like what we would call a win more move. Like right. you, don't, you don't actually have to win more, you just got to win, you right. know? Um, okay, so Theory's going to come up here. I don't know if this is safe. We've got one Shroud Stone up here. Yeah, you cannot push into this, right? Like, it's no a way. No, no way. this isn't going to work. But he doesn't have a base. He's got to go here, and he's pushing in, fighting under the Shroud Stone. So much damage coming out by Laser's units, and he just has way more Brutes and Gaunts. Like, there's no other way to say it, guys. He just has more, and TG is cool by Theory. Wow. Laser takes this series 3-0. That's crazy. 3-0. Good game. Hey, man, the concave always beats the convex. Dude, it's, I think it was Confucius that first said that. Yeah. <laughs> um, so, I mean, we're going to get a laser on the couch here in a second. This is What we just saw was a very common sight at a tournament where the two players finally uh, start to talk. Okay, so what, what did I do wrong back there? How yeah, do I yeah, beat yeah. this? Or It's like when they finish a game of chess, they like go through all the moves. They move the pieces like, yeah, back. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. That's what that was like, yeah. Um, so uh, we're going to have a laser on here and see how he's feeling. He's going to go up against uh, Parting. Parting, right? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. We're going to get the matchup that we wanted to see because he, he called him out at the beginning of the day. He's like, I found something that can kill him. Let's oh, this see if is it's so gonna good. Work. So that means coming up next, Infernal versus Celestial. Yep. Dude, that could be that could have been the grand finals. That's like how good both these guys are. You know, yeah. the potential yeah. grand finalists here. Um, but it's not the grand final. <laughs> They're still probe waiting in the winner's bracket. So yeah, things are getting very interesting here. It, it's kind of crazy. Like when I was doing the group draw for this, I did it on my stream. I had like a little little popcorn bucket with like oh, the, you the did stuff. Yeah. Do that? <laughs> yeah, and I remember, uh, uh, I opened it up, and the first match was Parting versus Laser, and I was kind of like, no, <laughs> <laughs> you know what I, mean? I should have rigged this tournament. I could have put these guys on opposite sides of the bracket because they wouldn't have known. I could have just, <laughs> just read it. Why was I transparent? <laughs> um, but uh, you know, I looked at it. I was like, oh, that's. Oh, that would have been a good match to have later on, but yeah, we're going to yeah. get it anyways. Oh, come on over here, a laser. Um, actually, ha have a seat over there and put the headset on. That's going to yeah, be better, better for us. Congratulations. Congratulations. Uh oh, hold on. we got to get that uh, headset turned on. Try again. Okay. okay. Uh, thank nice. you. Hello, guys. Yeah. Hello, hello. How are you feeling, man? Oh, good. That was stressful, this one. Yeah, yeah. Oh, dude. That, dude. That second game was sick, actually. Oof. I can't believe that that one fight you got with the first dragon push with the Magmadons and that little choke point, and then you just killed everything except the dragon. Like, that was actually crazy. Yeah, uh, yeah, I was so far behind. I felt like, when yeah, I saw yeah, he yeah. had that dragon, I was like, okay, yeah, I'm so far behind because I didn't tech. Uh, my whole game plan, I think, was bad. Like, the farming, the... <laughs> yeah, we were so curious about how that, what was up with so, that. So, well, I figured out that you can actually get this uh, resource camp with just gowns, just by kiting it well, and and I thought it's like a very good camp, you know? It gives yeah. you 200 gold, so it right. must be good. So, my whole plan was to, like, rush it and then go for, like, mass gamp, which is also good. But then I realized, like, it just takes so much time during a game. It's so risky. I thank God I got away with it, but like, <laughs> <laughs> but like even when I got away with it, it's like he just contests those camps. So it's just 200 gold, but I had to cut my economy to get it. So it's not even, in the end it's even, but I took so much risk to do it. It, yeah, it was not great, uh, but yeah, I mean. Got the win, that's all that matters. That's a win. Matters, yeah. Yeah, um, yeah. So you're gonna be going up against party. This is a rematch from the very first best of five we had uh, in the tournament. And uh, you were knocked out 3-0, right, from yeah. party. But, <laughs> yeah. but you said that you had come up with uh, or labbed out some new ideas. So yeah, yeah. talk back, to us. Back to the lab. Back yeah. to the lab. Yeah, I mean, uh, yeah, it was bad. I, I really haven't had time to practice uh, this game before this tournament. Like, I, I played one day. So this was the first time I saw this rush. And I was not sure. But yeah, I, I went to the lab and <laughs> been cooking something up. I, I've been I cooked something. I think <laughs> <laughs> I, I th I'm looking forward to this match. I mean, your previous set against the other celestial player was super impressive, like the meat farms, and it seems like you kind of improved in the matchups so much in just one day. 
Like, yeah. what did you do last night, dude? <laughs> like I mean, I, I played just like now a bunch of games, and uh, I was thinking, and uh, yeah, and I, I think I came up very quickly with a very, very strong game plan. Uh, and I also practiced some with Probe, so he knows my strategy. Oh. So I'm, I'm happy that he's in the final because now I can go full out yeah. already versus Spartan. Otherwise, right. if this was Probe first, then I would be like, I kind of need to go all out versus pro, but he knows what I'm doing. It would be right. So this is much better for me. Like I, I rather play like this. Yeah, so. but he will be watching this set, I presume. So yeah, but probe already knows my strategy. That's the point. Oh, he knows everything. Uh, mm, yeah, kind of like the the <laughs> best stuff. Yeah, yeah. He, he knows he knows what I want to play. Yeah. Right. All right. Well, uh, congratulations again, Elazer. Looking forward to seeing your match, guys. Uh, check out the merch. We got shirts like this. We got all sorts of uh, mugs, hoodies, mouse pads. We actually even have build order notebooks. Did you guys know that? I did not know that. <laughs> They're just literally notebooks, though. But, <laughs> um, and coming up next, we are going to... I should have not. That was a bad move for the camera. <laughs> Wait, is it this camera? Coming up next. Uh, it's going to be a laser versus uh, partying. You don't want to miss it. We'll be right back. Terrible exit. <laughs> and cut.